Welcome back to The Breakfast here on Plus TV Africa. Now let's go back in history to 1978 to share with you um, on this day, Muhammad Ali once again defended his uh, world heavyweight boxing title and won, his, uh, won the championship against Leon Spinks uh, at the Louisiana Superdome in New Orleans. Um, of course, he won it for the third time in his career. He was the first fighter to ever do so in a unanimous 15-round decision. Um, after his shock win over Ali to become heavyweight champion, Leon Spinks was stripped of the WBC title for not facing um, its number one ranked contender, Ken Northern. Instead, he agreed to rematch with Ali. Ali eventually entered the rematch as a two and a half uh, to one favorite and eventually won the game. Um, or won the, the fight eventually. Um, and right after this fight is when he retired from boxing. He eventually returned you know, a few years later to boxing. Uh, but this was uh, one of the first times that he retired from boxing. And also to go back in history, you know, heavyweight uh, fights that he had previously won before Leon Spinks. In 63, he had defeated Sonny Liston. 65, uh, 65, he defeated Floyd Patterson. 1974, or this is after uh, Leon Spinks, he then fought George Foreman. And I think that was the one that was called the um, Rumble in the Jungle. And then in 1978, he eventually won um, the fight against uh, Leon Spinks. Um, but this is, you know, you know, most of the, well, some of the biggest fights, you know, that made uh, Cassius Clay later known as uh, Muhammad Ali, who he was. Yes, fantastic news there. Um, we know, obviously, that this was a match that was, you know, highly televised. People needed to see what was happening. Um, Muhammad Ali fighting back to glory and winning that World Heavyweight Championship. Um, good one. Absolutely. And in 2020, the family of Breonna Taylor um, announced a $12 million, uh, 12 million US dollars wrongful settlement. Um, what happened was we know that Breonna Taylor um, had been killed by police officers who, you know, they just came into the room that night to execute a search warrant um, for a drug bust. But, it, you know, it was a wrong apartment then. And um, they fired at her. She was just 26 years old. And it, it was a very big story, you know. You know, one of those stories that, that shook the U.S. regarding racial discrimination and things like that. You know, but it was on this day in history that the city of Louisville actually agreed, you know, to pay her family the sum of $12 million. And it was, it was a lot, a lot of money. You know, it was one of the, the largest of its kind in the United States where, because we know that before then, police departments are usually shielded, you know, from having to pay damages for death in their custody. You know, and um, no police officer had been criminally charged with the death of, of Taylor. But uh, we, we know that at the end of the day, the family received the sum of $12 million. You know, I, I mean, I believe that's the least they can do because taking a life, really, you, you can never buy that back. And we've seen cases and cases where um, the police in the United States and even elsewhere in the world, you know, just, um, d I, I, would I say fail to exercise restraints or do their due diligence and then just end the promising lives of people who have, you know, careers ahead of them, you know, lives to live and people to love and then just snatch that, you know, because of racial profiling and all the challenges. But this day in history, um, Louis will agree to a $12 million settlement with her family. This was um, one of the saddest, you know, moments of uh, 2020. And this was just a few weeks, I believe, after George Floyd's uh, killing. Um, and sadly, I remember that there was a, an online campaign for Breonna Taylor that ran for, for months, you know, because it didn't seem like her, her death was making the news, you know. And I think it was because it now became an online campaign that they started to take it seriously because she was killed in her sleep, uh, um, you know, without, you know, um, you know, being violent or without... Um, the police feeling threatened in any way. They stormed into her apartment and, fought and shot at her while she was asleep. Um, eventually, there was that online campaign, you know, and her name continued to be mentioned. I remember um, um, you know, tennis player uh, Nomi Osaka also, you know, made mention of her name while it became popular back then. And that was the reason that they started to take it serious, and eventually she got this uh, settlement. Um, but it was, 2020 was a year of, you know, I think it was the year of the largest discussion in, in quite a while concerning racial discrimination and um, police, brutality. Um, police brutality against um, African Americans and some of all of that. So, sadly, this is how it ended. Uh, 12 million, I would never, obviously, never bring back uh, Breonna Taylor. Dollars. But, uh, 12 million dollars, I beg your pardon. We'll never bring back Breonna Taylor. Uh, but 
Um, the conversation continues with regards to racial discrimination and police brutality, including here in Nigeria, because apparently police are back on the streets here in Nigeria. Well, mm. that's another discussion for another day. Short break when we come back. Our first major conversation for today, who are these six Nigerians that have been accused of funding terror and funding the Boko Haram sect here in Nigeria? The United Arab Emirates has put out, you know, a list that has 38 names. We're going to be taking a look at this and seeing what the Nigerian government uh, should immediately start to do. Uh, we're going to be getting into that conversation after the short break here on Plus TV Africa. Stay with us.